Okay, X. I was obsessed with Goatman slash Skinwalker slash Mimicry stories for a while, but I haven't looked in a while. And then this happened to me last night, and now I literally cannot sleep or stop shitting my pants due to its proximity to my house. I will try to green text as much as I can, but first, background. I am 21 and a college senior from Connecticut. While I live in a semi-rural area, about 20 minutes to closest supermarket slash fast food. I go to school in Washington, D.C. Not the nice part either. The part where crackheads are a real thing, and cops are reassuring rather than troublesome. I've definitely seen some shit in my day. It would be good to mention here that I'm not some glandular freak. I'm about 6'1 and 240 pounds. A lot of muscle, but lord knows I could drop 15 pounds. I love to smoke pot, get drunk, and eat. Sue me. Being the good student that I am, I picked a real major, accounting, and I interned for a mid-sized PR firm, doing accounting bitch work and getting paid $20 an hour. College is expensive as fuck though, so I deliver pizzas at night after the office closes. It's a cheap, drunk food kind of pizza place that has an absurdly large delivery radius, and is about 20 minutes from my house, 5 minutes from the beach. My place is north of there, and we deliver probably another 15 minutes past my house. I'm actually typing this at work, in between examining the fine print on our client contracts to ensure we are charging them every penny we can. Cheap bastards. So basically, the further north you go from the pizza place, the more rural it gets. I work until close, and this occurs around 9.45pm. Be me, in the back folding pizza boxes like a good little corporate bitch. Counter girl comes back with a delivery slip. She tells me the customer sounded weird on the phone, kind of like he was talking through a fan, or through his hands, and that he was almost like gurgling. My DC experience instantly makes me think crackhead, although around here it's way more likely to be some benzoyl freak or painkiller addict. Automatically assume some weird interaction will occur. Look at the address. See, it is kind of in bumblefuck. I'm a little mad because I don't want to drive that far, but fuck it. It's the weirdest ticket I've ever seen. Guy ordered a large pizza with anchovies, ground beef, ham, sausage, pepperoni, etc. Literally $15 worth of extras. I go ask the counter girl if it's right. She says she thinks so. She couldn't really make it out though, so she said she did her best. She's like 16, so I cut her some slack. Assume she was daydreaming and called the number back. Phone rings 5, 10, 20, 30 times. No answer. Hang up, call again. The phone goes right to, The number you have dialed does not have a voicemail box that has been set up yet. Goodbye. Okay then, JPEG. Manager decides to just make a pizza as ordered and proceed from there. Deliver a pizza to a hilariously obese and blackout drunk couple. Invited me in for drinks, but I don't drink or smoke when I work. Anon has a good work ethic. Respectable. Hope someone else took weird pizza. Surprise! No one did. It's my turn. Begrudgingly take the pizza and get in my car. Enter address into phone. It's on a side street adjacent to the park locals call Open Space, which despite the name, is about 500 acres of straight woods. It's about 25 minutes away, basically on the edge of our range. Put on some dubstep, judge me, and crank my turbo subi, judge me more, out to this road. If you're not from a rural area, this can be hard to explain. Winter in the woods is scary. There is never a single sound, ever. Unless there's something larger than a cat walking around, it's you and dead silence. Finally, get to address. There are a few houses on the street, but they sit on probably five acres, so they are spaced out a fair amount. Looking for number 1134. Pass a 1130, then a long, long stretch of nothing. Then a 1144. What the fuck, JPEG? I just want to get this over with and get the next delivery without getting stabbed by some pill head over a fucking pizza. Call the number. Rings. Rings. Stops ringing. 
there's no sound, but instead, kind of like a buzzing or a humming. It's hooked up to my car stereo, and it's getting louder and louder until I just hang up because I don't want to ruin my speakers. Windows are fogging up, because at this point, I'm pulled over between those two houses. Right when I roll the windows down, I am overcome by the odor of decaying trash. Like, driving through Newark, New Jersey. Fucking gross. So I put the car in first, and I start pulling towards the next house. At the end of the driveway, there is a stanchion with a light on top. I'm gonna pull into this house, and knock and ask if maybe they gave the wrong number over the phone. Makes sense for a pillhead. I'm probably 100 feet away when I see someone step out of the darkness into the light at the bottom of the driveway. Good, it's the fucker that ordered. Expecting this guy to be all over the fucking place, leaning over and being fucked up. Guy isn't that fucked. Stop the car about 10 feet from him. Black coat that looks three times too big for him, even though he's probably got five inches on me. Don't look at him at first. Getting pizza out of the car and getting ticket and change as I talk. Hey sir, sorry about the wait and the calls. This is pretty far. No response. Realize I should be watching him considering the signs. The smell is still pretty pungent, but I know it's not trash day. I get the pizza on the roof of my car. He is standing under the light on the opposite side of my car. So I got out of my driver's seat and went to the driver rear to get pizza. Put pizza on roof of driver rear. Guy is probably 10 feet away from passenger rear. I finally pay enough attention to get a good look at him. Giant, tall, no shoes, ripped up jeans, stains everywhere. Big jacket as mentioned. Look at his face. Sunken eyes. Can't even see them with the light. Getting real sketched out cause guy hasn't moved or said a word. Stop the process and just stare at the guy. He is staring right at me with those freaky fucking eyes. His head is sort of bobbing, side to side, but not in any fluid sense at all. Kind of like a car door. Like how it stops at halfway open, then you give it another shove, and it stops at all the way open. I watch his head do this in no real pattern for probably 10 seconds, starting to get really uneasy between the stench and the head thing, and the eyes, and the not fucking answering. I stand frozen, and so does he. Without breaking eye contact, I take my phone out of my pocket and hold it level with the roof so I could look at the guy and my phone at the same time. Go to recent calls. Call the number for the guy. Call it. Phone starts ringing, but I hear no phone anywhere. Then, out of the quiet of the woods, I hear faintly, so, so faintly, a fucking cell phone ringing back in there, maybe 50 or 100 yards away. This is me kicking myself for not getting my concealed carry yet. This is me almost shitting myself. The guy's just standing there, still doing the head thing, but I swear I see that fucker smile. Finally, get the courage to speak. Uh, can you please come get this? Also, I think you may have dropped your phone when you were hiding a body or whatever in the woods. <laughs> Yeah. Nervously laugh, still thinking, maybe this guy dug too deep into the prescription bottle or found some PCP or some shit. I see his mouth open, head still bobbing, feet planted to the ground. He makes sort of a low, guttural, quick grunt, then a high grunt, then a low grunt. They are sort of soft, kind of like someone clearing their throat. I've shut the rear passenger door at this point, and I'm ready to book into the driver's seat if I got to. Just as I go to call the phone again, I hear words. The phone's not mine? The pause between the and phone's not was way too long. Phone's not literally sounded like one word. Mine came off an octave higher. For some reason, I'm imagining the protagonist from Hatred for the story. Not even an edgy teen. My mind is DEFCON 5. Like, just full panic attack. It should be DEFCON 1. Knees are weak. I'm literally about a piece out. I push the pizza to the far side of the roof, away from me. 
finally muster out. Sir, you're freaking me the fuck out. I have a 45 and less than $20 on me. Please come take this so I can leave. When I say this, the head bobbing stops. His eyes are dark and burning a hole through my skull. Opens his mouth again. It was his... What? I say, stunned. It was his. The phone was his? The guy comes towards the car. Not a step, but like one huge muscle spasm that propels him forward. The phone was his? He repeats. I'm on the verge of tears at this point. Standing next to the open driver's side, the pizza is on the roof over the passenger rear door. Guy jerk jumps once closer to the car. The phone is not his anymore. I blubber wordlessly, and then, gathering man balls, I scream, I'm gonna fucking call the cops and blow your fucking drug addict head off if you don't get the fuck out of here. I see this fucker smile, this creepy fucking smile, and without moving his mouth, I hear him say in a completely different voice. A voice I've never heard before. Go away. Stop following me. I will call the police. In one big jerky motion, the thing reaches forward, takes the pizza off the top of the car, and places a couple of round things that I later identify as quarters on the roof, surrounded by dark liquid that spreads over the roof. I don't even think. Just get in the car and peel down the road. Leave the hot sleeve for the pizza. Leave the shit on the roof. Don't even close the door all the way. I go down the road at about 80 for a quarter mile, then pull a U-turn, cause I don't want to get even more lost with the cycle here. I whip down the road, past the place where he was. Nothing. Finally, get to the end of the road. There is a stop sign to merge with the main road. Look right to make sure it's clear. Look left. This thing's face is 12 inches from my own when I turn. Tactically, shit myself. Peel down the road. Finally, make it back to Pizza Place, shaking like bloody hell. Smoke a joint just to calm me down, which I never do when I'm working. I walk in the front door of the Pizza Place. Hey Anon, that guy at the open space house just called back. You said you forgot some food, but he only ordered the pizza, right? You said come back or something, I don't know. I start crying, look at my phone, which had been thrown through the car with my driving. 14 fucking missed calls from that number, literally in tears. All the voicemails are empty except the last one. All I hear is ragged breathing and those low grunts, fucking bawling my eyes out in front of this hot ass counter girl and I don't even give a fuck. Sit for 10 minutes and calm down. Remember the change on the roof. Go out to my car and turn on flashlight. The roof of my car was covered in the most viscous weird liquid, but it smells like blood and I throw up immediately. In the panel gap between my trunk and the end of my rear window, I find the quarters, covered in the same maple syrup thick goop blood shit and stuck to it are soft little chunks of what I can only imagine is tissue. Go to open my car and my blood turns to fucking ice. There is a single line of blood going from the front quarter panel to the driver's side door. The, the fucking thing tried to open my motherfucking door when it was next to me at the stop sign. Tactically cry and poop my pants more. I go back in. Tell counter girl to try and call the number again. She tries over and over and over, but the phone goes right to voicemail. Next morning, I give the number to my uncle, who is a police captain a few towns over. Says the number is from a burner phone, paid in cash. Basically, untraceable, and it appears to be off now. I sleep with the lights on now. I will be lurking for comments or suggestions or something. Like, is this fucker gonna stalk me and kill me? Or call me again? I'm fucking terrified. Sounds like a slash X walker case indeed.